Hello and welcome back to Berserker. We're going to be heading into the arena straight away here. There is a rather good helmet available and I'm thinking we're probably going to be recruiting a companion because obviously that is one of the prerequisites that we need to fulfill for our initial starter quest and I would like to be able to do that. And apart from obviously, you know, completing a tournament and everything we're going to be gaining a pretty significant amount of cash so that's obviously something that i'm very much looking forward to getting because i still need to make a two-handed weapon or at the very least i need to purchase one or make it or whatever so hopefully i'm going to be able to do one or the other and if i'm not then uh, well then i need to uh well give myself a bit of a thrashing because I need to make sure that that happens because obviously the whole reason that this is a berserker series is to play with a two-handed and obviously we do need to do that so I'm very much hoping that I will be able to do a little bit of smithing after this oh yeah I also found the morale um, the morale settings in the uh, chaos is tweaks menu and that was thanks to one of you in the comments that actually gave me the the specific location for that and it was under battle morale now that obviously is um I, I believe a separate menu to the regular morale so that was the reason why i was getting a little bit confused with it but yeah anyway as you can see bears are doing massive damage to me right now <laughs> amazingly enough and uh, someone actually mentioned why do i have the same loadout on a lot of my troops even the higher tier ones if their skills increase and, and all that all that stuff well the main reason why that is is because whenever they have more skills they are going to be using that weapon much much more proficiently and that was a noble super bear hilariously enough okay wow no wonder that guy almost took me down anyway so that's the point because even even though let's just say that let's just say a recruit is using the same weapon as a noble super bear for example well obviously the recruit is going to basically not know how to use this weapon very well but the noble super bear on the other hand is going to use it extremely proficiently so even if they are using the same weapon it still gives dramatically different results so that's obviously something to bear in mind this is a noble super bear coming in oh look at how massive he is He's massive in comparison to me. Hilariously enough, someone did say that my character looks like a child in comparison to all of my units, which is, uh, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that's pretty fair. That is pretty fair to assume that. And it is very funny. So hopefully I will be able to prove myself in battle as we defeat the Noble Super Bear. All right, it seems like the Noble Super Bear is actually... Oh, wow. The Yes, the Super Bear is actually now in the final round. And now I'm going to have to defeat this guy, whoever this is. I think this is a Militia. Yeah, Militia Spearman. If I'm going to have any chance of winning this tournament. So I'm going to just stay at range for the moment because I kind of want to use my Throne Weapon against him. Ah. Oh, I was really hoping he would actually lower his shield there for a second, but no, no such luck. But easy enough, easy enough to take him down. Really not that big a deal. Anyway, now this is where things get very dicey indeed, because this guy has the best of the best skills. The only thing that he doesn't have is, of course, throwing weapon proficiency maxed out, because we actually ran out of points at that point. Yes. So, yeah, that, that's a little bit of a shame gotta say oh got him in the head I can't believe it I can't believe he lowered his shield he must have thought that I was really bad and that I would never be able to hit him from that distance and he would be correct most of the time not that time though but there you go that was a fantastic victory for us right there good amounts of renown too and we did get a rather nice helmet, which I can either sell or I can give to one of my companions. I'm actually going to be getting her, I guess, because she's the only one that is available here. So, yeah, she's actually 602, hilariously enough. And there you go. We gained 25 renown because I have technically, you know, established our clan, so to speak. And now we have Radagos here, who is obviously going to tell us about our family. And that we are going to now need to head over to this hideout in the near distance. And then we'll see what we can do. All right. 
I am very much looking forward to this. Now, the one thing that I want to do first is I actually do want to try and create a two-handed sword before we go over. I, I would create a two-handed axe if I could, but I don't think that's going to give me the best possible stats for such a low-level weapon. So I might have to be a little bit careful about that, but let's just take a quick look. Okay, so what can I actually create? Wait a minute. Oh, this is all new to me. How do I... What? How do I change... This is a dagger, but how do I change... Ah, there we go. You click on free build and then you can change this. This is a completely new menu to me, by the way. So I'm very interested to see how this is going to work. Okay, two-handed sword. We've unlocked four... <laughs> four parts. Okay. <laughs> well... Yeah, this is um, this is not gonna this is not gonna work. I'm gonna use I'm gonna make a javelin actually. I want to try and can I not make that? Oh, I can't make that yet. Mm. Now that is very frustrating indeed. Oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to do a little bit of smelting before we can actually get any further with this, because it's pretty obvious that we're going to need to do that. So I'm thinking we'll probably just smelt a couple of these. There we go. Let's just get more of these wooden hammers smelted. Let's get some more of those. There we go. I, I want to try and get to 25 if I can. And bear in mind that my Chaos's Tweaks does not have increased smithing experience gain. So you can do that if you want to, if you want to make it a little bit less tedious. But my Chaos's Tweaks is default, basically. So everything that I'm doing right now is very much default in terms of smithing, uh, you know, smithing progression and all that stuff. Apart from the fact that obviously stamina is disabled. I personally find stamina extremely irritating and it takes way too long to basically do anything because you, you just smelt like, what, four or five things and you're, then you're out of stamina and then you have to wait. And I really hate that. So generally that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, so now let's just see. Seven parts unlocked now. Seven parts. Okay. That's looking pretty nice. So let's see what I can do here. That's it? Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, do I have enough? Yes, I do. Oh, now that's intriguing. I never would have anticipated this. Okay, I have enough. Let's make the blade slightly longer. And then we'll go with that. We're going to get literal, like, huge amounts of deficit right here. Huge amounts of penalties. So let's just call this... Um, <laughs> peasant slayer because it is terrible it is an absolutely terrible thing and you could pretty much only slay peasants with this in my opinion and that's it i have no more no more materials so there you are we've made a two-handed sword it's probably one of the worst things i've ever seen but it's a two-handed nevertheless and i'm very intrigued about using it so let's see what we can now do by heading on over to the hideout here. Who's this guy? You need access to the commons. I don't really care about that, sir. Uh, bear soldiers. Okay, nothing really to worry about there either. Alright. I might... Aha! I have a focus point and an attribute point to spend. So what do we want to do? Do I want to spec more into smithing? I probably do want to spec more into smithing. But I think... Oh, I don't know, actually. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to spec into smithing right now because I personally think that I will be able to level up much faster by having smithing level up faster and then those additional points that I gain from the subsequent level ups will be put to better use elsewhere. So, for example, into medicine and into roguery, potentially. Don't, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about roguery. And let's go for some more intelligence here as well, because medicine is definitely something I want to focus on. And there we have it. Okay, so these are going to be mountain bandits. Hmm. Little bit worried about this. We do have a bunch of bear zerkers, so I shouldn't have that much trouble. But bear in mind that my, <laughs> my two-handed skill is really not that good. It is not that good at all. So we might have a couple of difficulties here because obviously I've been using a one-handed for the majority of the time so far. And we're going to be taking all of these people. Yes. Okay. Let's take all of these people and see how we do. I'm very, very interested. Oh, look at this. You can actually tell people to follow you now. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'm going to tell this guy to follow me then. Can you? I'm pressing F, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. I'm not entirely sure. 
Why does that... Why is that? I have no idea. Okay. Well, whatever the case, let's uh, tell everyone to charge, I guess. Let's tell everyone to charge in and I'll see what I can... Ooh, this is really fast, actually. This two-handed is pretty quick. I like it. Oh, well, not, not as quick as... Yeah, not as quick as that guy. Did stab him a little bit. Nice little... Ooh, dismembered. There we go. We got six points in two-handed. We're now at 50 skill. That is actually pretty nice. I did take some pretty considerable damage though, which is obviously not very good. Bear in mind that I was actually anticipating or maybe even thinking about installing a mod that gives me a very small amount of HP region in combat because a berserker, I mean obviously a berserker is going to get stronger the lower its HP is, but I thought to myself, well, maybe it would make sense for me to have the ability to regenerate a little bit. Just a little. And I'm not talking about an overpowered amount or anything like that. I'm not thinking about, you know, I don't know, 10 HP per second. Because let's face that, that's way too that's way too strong. But I'm thinking about something like, I don't know, 1 HP every 10 seconds or something like that. I think that would be kind of balanced. Because if you manage not to take a considerable amount of damage at least, then you're going to get back up to full HP. And you can still die very fast as we've seen it is very very likely for that to happen but you know i did i ended up not doing that you know when i was initially you know perusing through a bunch of the the mods available and there you go seems like we've already achieved victory and i'm actually wondering whether i should go for a one-on-one -on -one battle with this guy i'm thinking considering we're playing kind of like a crazy berserker kind of character maybe it would make sense eh maybe it would make sense so let's have a look I'll duel you, yes. You have a two-handed sword as well, eh, sir? Oh, well, never mind, you're dead now. I'll take that. Tea bag. Tea bag time. There we go. All right, so that is it. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful victory. We gain 100% of the loot, which is what you would expect, of course. It's just me. And we are apparently going to be executing this guy. And... I try. There you go. That was a wonderful, wonderful execution right there, Radagos. Good work, sir. Okay, so let's just take a quick look. Anything here that I really want? No, it doesn't seem like it. The horse is the most useful thing. And there we go. So glad to see everyone safe. Nielsen, is this my brother? Really? <laughs> okay, you've got a very rare name. I don't think I've ever seen that name before. Okay, so goodbye, Radagos. I'm going to just let him go. I'm not going to actually execute him myself or anything like that. I feel like that might be... A bit too bloodthirsty for my liking, even though we are technically a berserker, it might make sense, but still. Anyway, let's go over here, and let's see what we can do. I, actually, I did level up quite a bit, didn't I? So let me actually just spec something real fast. Okay, so this is basically for two-handed axes and two-handed maces only. So, yeah, I mean, it's very much pigeonholing you into a certain playstyle, and that is something that I very much do not like. Because at one point, you're thinking to yourself, oh yes, I'll definitely use two-handed axes and two-handed maces for the rest of the time. And then you find out that two-handed axes and maces are pretty rare. And to come across a good one is, well, unlikely. Whereas, if you increase your swing speed with two-handed swords, then that's much, like, much more likely for you to use, you know, that. And also, swing speed for all of your troops is going to be very important too. Anyway, let's go and attack these bandits. And we'll see how we do here. I'm, I'm sure this will be absolutely fine. Someone actually did, t did tell me how to use RTS camera. And uh, I will be checking that out a little bit by myself off screen. Because I don't want to, um, shall we just say, mess up so, so dramatically that uh, it's going to, uh, you know, get me killed or something so I, I generally what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just go into a battle against like what, what five looters or something and then just see what i can do um with that just experiment a little bit That was it, wasn't it? Okay, that was a bit too fast, wasn't it? Oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so we did end up losing one unit. What did we lose? A berserker? Are you serious? We lost a berserker? Oh, that always happens, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely always happens every single time. Oh well, never mind. Okay, 
At least we gained a huge amount of loot there as well. I'm going to go to Ascar because obviously Ascar is where you basically need to go or, or want to go if you really want um, some, some relatively nice horses. And look at this. What? Have they changed it now? Oh, they, they, I think they've, they've changed this. I think they've changed it so that your, um, what, your younger, yeah, younger, younger siblings, I think they are a more advanced age, because from what I recall, they started at about age four or age five, and now they are 15 and 11, respectively. That is actually kind of amazing, and much better, in my opinion, than what they had beforehand. So I like that quite a bit. Let's go for a well-balanced sword. Let's go for one-handed. Let's go for one-handed and two. Oh, she's actually going for one-handed and two-hand. Fantastic. Look at that. Wow. Already looking like an absolute beast. And then we have Farok here as well, who is going to be increasing his vigor, I suppose. And we'll probably get him some points in leadership. Really? Really? Medicine? Okay. Apparently, he's going to be a bit of a doctor then, or something along those lines. Well, I guess we'll see. Anyway, can't sell their products in Ascar. I don't really care about that too much. I I'm not a big fan of those kinds of tasks. And we're going to just go and sell our prisoners. I'm actually wondering whether there are any manual laborer quests in the area. But generally, I don't really care about that too much, because we do gain roguery skill from this, which, in my opinion, could be quite fun to level up. So... I'm going to see what I can do about that with some of our focus points once we've leveled up our smithing skill just that bit more. Anyway, let's just take a quick look here. I need to make sure that she's wearing something good as well. She turns out not to be, so we should really give her something there. Let's give her a nice shield as well because she's actually using one-handed, if you can believe it. And otherwise, is there anything else here that could be good for her? Uh, these shoes are slightly better, very minimally upgradable and that seems to be about it just gonna sell all of that there we go okay so let's go back in here and take a quick look at what kind of horses we can buy well yeah obviously as you can see right here these are really really cheap and they're going to help us a great deal so let's get a bunch of mules as well i don't want too many because that's going to cause us to have some problems with our herd bonuses and uh, deficits and so on so let's just go for another five desert horses or something. And then we want to take a look at our goods too, because they might have some hardwood here. They don't? Really? Okay, that's kind of intriguing. Let's buy some date fruit and some meat then, just so that we can maybe level up our steward skill a little bit more. What else have we leveled up? Ah, yes, we, we gained another two-handed here. Troops in the formation you are leading gain five experience for each enemy you kill. That could be very lucrative later down the line when I'm actually able to get more than two or three kills. And all melee infantry troops in your party gain 5% more experience in battles. Considering they are all melee infantry at the moment, that sounds like a good idea too. Anyway, uh, a number of people have actually said that maybe it would be an idea to um, instigate a, uh, a ranged, um, ranged troop line. And now here's the thing. I did say that at the very beginning, I wasn't going to use ranged weapons at all. And my, my units were not going to use ranged weapons, but some of you persuaded me to go with thrown weapons. And I think that kind of suits the whole berserker theme. And generally I would agree with those of you that have suggested an archer troop line, but maybe not for this series. So I will say that generally I might end up using some archers later down the line, but for the moment I don't really want to do that, at least for now. Now let's have a look at this. Two-handed weapon attacks that deal damage over 25% of your opponent's hit points have a 30% chance to knock them down. So that's actually super, super interesting. Can I... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to bannerlordperks.com. Hopefully it's still active. Yes, it, it is indeed. 1.6.1. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so Baptized in Blood is actually not implemented correctly, whereas Show of Strength actually is. So I will be taking Show of Strength because apparently the experience for each enemy killed effect does not seem to be implemented. However, it does correctly multiply the experience gained for infantry by 5%. Okay. Now, personally... I I think knocking down is much more much more powerful 
So I'm going to do that, and then we'll just go with it. All right, so this is our first battle against Desert Bandits. And as I said beforehand in uh, earlier in the episode, we are now capable of making it so that enemies do not retreat as a result of their low morale. Or at least I hope that that is the case. I think I, I've done that correctly. I might have not done it right, but well, we'll, we'll I guess we'll find out, right? I guess we'll find out whether that is indeed the case. Uh, oh, I really want to, you know... I really want to do some damage to these uh, these cavalry, but obviously they're making it very difficult for me right now. Nice, nice. Yeah, get them, get them. Yes, there we are. That is some nice damage right there. Nice dismemberments going on too. And we knocked that guy down. Did you see that? We knocked the guy on the left down. That was really good. Unfortunately, I'm taking massive damage right here. But there you are. Nice. Oh, did, did I... What? Did you see that guy? He went flailing all over the place. I have no idea what happened there, but yeah, he is quite assuredly dead. Ow. And I am quite... <laughs> and I am obviously quite dead too. Anyway, uh, can I can I take over? I have no idea how to actually take over for these troops when I... Um, yeah, that's the point. I need to have a look at that. I really do. I need to have a look at the uh, RTS camera controls. I know someone did mention it, but I am very, very bad at remembering that kind of stuff. So I will be checking that out later on. But yeah, that would have been really cool because I would have actually been able to take control of one of my other troops. And then I would have been able to fight with them. That is what RTS camera allows you to do, at least. So yeah, that would be really fun. All right, so we're currently hunting down brigands for another task. And, of course, this is going to be pretty easy for us because they're, you know, we are uh, actually having that thing where we basically make it so that they can't run away due to their morale being low. And I'm going to be taking sprint here because, as you can see, when no shields and ranged weapons are wielded, you gain 5% movement speed. And, as you know, movement speed is pretty much everything for a berserker or at least i think that that is the case we're going to be going for another focus point in two-handed here now that i have a two-handed it makes all the sense in the world to continue you know pumping as many focus points in that as possible policy wages being reduced by five percent and recruitment costs being reduced by 15 percent. don't really care about that however spartan is going to be pretty useful all throughout the game the party consuming 10% less food and no no morale penalty from having a single type of food that just sounds like really the best solution pretty much all over the place so let's have a look gonna just kill these guys and that will be the end of the task right unless i have to actually go in there no no i don't have to go in there manually okay so that's fantastic and now we can recruit some more troops as well and do i have some people yeah look at that they're all leveling up like no one's business fantastic Okay, that is looking really, really good. Now, let's just wait here for some time. I would like to participate in this tournament if I can, because if I win one more tournament, I'm then going to have the opportunity to either purchase a caravan. I mean, technically, I could... I think I might be able to purchase a caravan already. But also, I could go for a workshop. And if you've taken a look at my mod list, you'll see that I actually do not have anything that increases workshop prosperity however i am hoping that the developers of bannerlord might have done something about that because workshops in the grand scheme of things they really don't do much for you in terms of their profitability they don't give you a huge amount of cash and generally they are yeah, to put it the most bluntly you know the most blunt way that i can they're basically useless in comparison to the enterprises from Warband, because if you were to get a Weavery and Die Works in Warband, in certain places, it's going to just absolutely destroy pretty much every other method of making money. And that's how it should be in Bannerlord as well. Obviously, it should be a little bit more intricate and a little bit more com complex, because of course, you know, there's a whole economy to take into account. But the way that it works here is whenever you've got something, so let's say you have a smithy or something like that, and the smithy has an overabundance of iron ore to create these tools with, it just doesn't give you that much. It just gives you like 100, 150 per day. 
and you don't even gain that in profit most of the time. So it's a mm, little bit of a weird, uh, weird situation right there. But hopefully that's going to be um, somewhat fixed. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm definitely going to check that out after we win this. If we win this. Oh, nice. Killed the Azerite Light Archer already. This guy is proving to be rather tricky to eliminate. Oh, it's actually one. It's actually our companion, hilariously enough. Yes. Yeah, she finally got taken down. I did do a lot of damage to her after all, so I guess that is to be expected. And now I have 118 HP because I did level up once again. Oh, nice. That was a nice hit right there. And that was a bear recruit that got taken down. I'm actually kind of surprised that the bear recruit was not acting that smart. Although, to be fair, they all have the same AI, don't they? All right. Come on now. Come on now. No. Are you serious? Are you serious? You, you Ah, there we go. There we go. All right, not too bad. Okay, so now we're in one versus one battles. I'm actually going to get a lance for this. I don't really care about the lance that much, so I'm probably going to probably smelt it down or sell it if it sells for a decent amount. But generally, those things will unlock a wide variety of different parts. So it would be quite nice to do that. Got to be careful. Oh, what? Did you see that? I think I'm, I might have uh, might have twitched to the last moment there, and then just been like, ah, you know what? <laughs> it's, I'm just gonna hit, I'm just gonna hit his ear very slightly, just like a small little breeze going past his ear right there. Oh dear, I'm now up against a noble super bear once again. Well, this is, uh, am I? Wait a minute, no, I'm actually with a noble super bear. Ah, phew. Okay, I was a little bit worried there for a second. These guys are very, very good at what they. I mean, look at that. I bet this guy could have won this battle all by himself, to be honest. You know, next time, next time we're in a situation where we can check that out, I'm just going to let him do his thing, and then we're going to see whether he can actually win in a one versus two situation. I think that's going to be super fun to find out. Okay, wait a minute. Come on now. Ooh, okay, he moved into range right at the wrong moment. That was uh, that was pretty perfect, actually. Ah, uh, he's going to be reeling from that in the morning. Oh dear. Oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so now I have uh, seventeen thousand gold. I should be able to purchase a workshop relatively easily, but of course, I don't want to purchase a workshop here. I will be making my way over probably to probably to Maranath. I think Maranath is one of the best places for the smithy. Epicrotia is very, very good for the smithy as well. Uh, Sirenea is actually really good for something too, but I can't remember what it is. Mm. I mean, there's silver ore there. There's, a, there's fish. There's raw silk. Flax? Hmm. Not entirely sure what was good there. I seem to... I, I don't know. Maybe some things have changed, actually, since my Trader series as well. But, yeah. Those kinds of places are going to be pretty good. Anyway, so let's have a look and see. Increase your damage with pole arms while mounted and not mounted. Okay, not mounted will be the one we go for. Oh, and I actually did gain a perk in medicine. Increases your hit points by 5. And character heals 30% of lost health points after each battle. And increases character's healing rate and movement speed. Well, the movement speed is obviously what I'm going to be going for here. And uh, that is that. Okay, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.